What is up you guys? Back at y'all with another video. This is an interesting one. We're starting a brand new show called Building the National Championship Roster. Now, if you're not a Kane fan, hang around. I had some interesting stuff, some numbers to throw around that you might be able to think about for your team and what they need to become a national championship team. Now, if you're a Kane fan, definitely hang around because we're going to be applying all these principles to our team, seeing if we can use this and where we're at for them. It's the first part of this series. We're going to have episodes 10 minutes long each about, and we're going to break it down by position, each one, what the national championship team possesses and what Miami has or doesn't have. So today, we're starting out with the quarterback. All right, so... I'm going to be referring to my notes a lot, so I'm sorry for those who are frustrated that I don't look at the camera 100% of the time, but this football is a game of numbers sometimes, and i got to get my numbers right to make sure y'all know what's, what's going on and it's factual. So the first thing that I think a national championship team needs at the quarterback position is accuracy, but that's kind of like a duh, a given. But what kind of accuracy are we talking about? It's got to be above 60%. You have to have above 60% completion. Really, 65% would be nice and perfect because anything lower is just there's so much hitting yards, you're not going to win it. You're not going to be able to survive and cover that up. You're not going to be able to win the game if that happens. Point in, in Case in point, example number one, Tua Tagovailoa, 321 attempts, 223 completions. How much percentage is that? That's 69% completion. That's ridiculous. Uh, this guy was trained by Dan Eno, so Kane's fans, that's pretty good for us. Uh, I'm pretty excited. If you're not a Kane fan, it's all good. Uh, I just hope your quarterbacks can be able to be that good. Now, the next guy, uh, Trevor Lawrence, the freshman phenom. He had 365 attempts and passed and completed 239 of those. That's good for 65%. Look, guys, it's it's a given, it's a duh. You gotta have good completions percentages to be able to be a successful quarterback and win a national championship. Now, next part I'm gonna be talking about is you gotta protect the ball. And just to keep it interesting, I'm gonna have some Trevor Lawrence highlights right behind me here. We're gonna throw them up and see, watch him play here. If you're interested in that, here's the thing. You gotta protect the ball if you wanna win a national championship and be a successful quarterback, okay? It, you, you just have to. Trevor Lawrence was 30 touchdowns and four interceptions for his season. That's good, clean ball. All right, Tua Tagovailoa, 46 touchdowns with only six interceptions for a whole season. That's ridiculous. Look, if you win the turnover battle, believe it or not, 70% of the time you're going to win almost 75 percent of the time you're going to win if you win the turnover battle as in pertaining to the turnover margin so no interceptions means hey there's a good chance you're going to win this game and that's what you got to do if you want to be in the national championship especially at the quarterback position last but not least you got to have a future at quarterback okay i can't express this one enough and it's kind of a new developing thing but you got to have a future at quarterback now, there's some pretty incredible stories from past season that explain and amplify my reason for this belief to have a successful quarterback room for a national championship. And the first one starts with Tua Tagovailoa. Now, if you weren't watching, as you know, in the SEC championship game, he was hurt. Jalen Hurts had to come in and save Bama from a 28 down to 21 lead. So Georgia was up by a whole touchdown. He goes on and leads Bama for two straight touchdown drives, gives Scripson Tide the 35-28 nudge and leads them to the eighth SEC championship. Had he not come, had he left the program, had they not had a guy to replace Tua Tagovailoa, they would not be the SEC champs last year and they probably would have not been in the national championship. Now the other story that's a little bit more hidden and some people didn't know about is actually on the Clemson side of the ball. It got kind of crazy wacky where Kelly Bryant just left. He said, bye guys, I'm done. I was a starter for y'all. Can't believe he didn't let me be a starter and continue. Trevor Lawrence is just balling out and Dabo made that executive move and he should have. So in the week that they had that turmoil happening, Trevor Lawrence gets injured. This was Kelly Bryant's moment to shine, but he wasn't there. He was gone. They were playing against Syracuse and they were down. They were down really bad. It was tough. And Chase Bryce was the man that engineered the Clemson victory. So it took them a four-point win to beat Syracuse. Only four points against Syracuse. Now, the Tigers had to complete a whole bunch of drives without Trevor Lawrence. He was out basically right before halftime. Chase Bryce orchestrated a 75-yard drive in just one minute and 50 seconds to be able to keep the game close. There was a moment when the Tigers were down, it was fourth and one, and then they were called for a false start, moving them back another five yards. 
fourth and six this is game over this would be done if they don't make it chase bryce goes throws the pass connects with t higgins for 20 yards first down and just with 41 seconds left the ball game is won by trevor atn scoring in for a rushing touchdown nobody knows and mentions this too much enough but had chase bryce not been there had there not been a future quarterback at clemson clemson may not have been in the national championship now these were fun and interesting facts but how do they apply to Miami or your team? Now, I'm going to be evaluating this to Miami. Does Miami have number one accuracy? I can't say yes, but I won't say no. I'm going to say maybe. The thing is, I can't say yes or no because we don't have a starter quarterback. I can't be definite on it. It can be determined if Tate Martell, as of the moment of this recording, if this way wa his waiver is not signed and not approved it's not denied but it's not approved so if he gets in there i mean he's done like 10 out of 10 passing versus a rutgers granted 111 team but he's got accuracy ability so does williams as the staff has said that you know he was very accurate of a passer but there's this factor for miami and that canes fans gotta get excited about and it's called the dan enos factor Danny Enos is an amazing quarterback coach, and he's going to be able to fine-tune these guys' talents and tweaks. It, it doesn't matter if you're Perry or Peyton Matocha, he's going to know exactly what needs to be done to improve their accuracy. In fact, just so you guys know, Nikosi Perry had 50% completion last year. 50%! That's awful! There's no reason for that. That's well below the market to be anywhere close to a playoff contender at the quarterback position. There's no way we could have gotten there with 50% completion, not to mention Malik Rozier's awful completion rating. So, Tua was there performing and delivering intermediate passes for Alabama, and they were, like, decent and good, but mainly why he lost the job was because he wasn't as accurate as Tua. He was decent on his legs. He was pretty impressive, but Tua was just so much more of an accurate quarterback. So, in the, uh, during the season, as it went up until the SEC Championship, Dan Eno sat down and got Tua tweaked. He got him perfect dead eye and so where he was completing only 48 percent passes that were for 10 yards or more after the dan enos factor he's completing 60 percent of them that's a huge improvement year over year expect the dan enos factor to be an amazing tool for miami and the quarterbacks the second part protect the ball maybe but just so you know as i was throwing up tua had 46 touchdowns six interceptions trevor lawrence four interceptions 30 ish touchdowns Nicholas Pierre had 13 touchdowns and six interceptions. Yeah, that's... For every touchdown, that's an interception. I mean, for the same exact interception count, Tua accounted for three times the amount of touchdowns. That's just, it gotta be cleaned up. And then hence why we don't know if he's gonna be started or not. Can he? He can. He can start. But he's gotta fix that and keep the ball safe. So, I can't say that we can protect the ball. But I'm gonna give it a maybe ranking because of the Danny Enos factor. The third part is, do we have a future quarterback? And I'm going to give an emphatic no. The reason for that is, we don't even have a starter. If you don't have a proven starter, how do you know what is going to be the backup? Now, I'm not saying that Miami has no future quarterback. We definitely do, but it's unproven, okay? We have raw talent, and we also have Tate Martell, who doesn't have a waiver. Now, Williams, if he gets a chance, I'd like to see what he can do. Maybe he can prove it. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of other unproven cases in Peyton Matocha and such that maybe they'll be able to do it. You know, it it was so awful last year. They, they There's just an improvement ability for us. And in Dan Eno's factor, I believe the Miami Hurricanes quarterback room is not at the national championship level that it needs to be today, but it can get there depending on what happens in the offseason and how Dan Enos evaluates and helps that room. Let me know your guys' thoughts. If you enjoyed the first episode of this series of what quarterback rooms need, which accuracy, protection, and a future quarterback position applies to your team. Do you think you have it? Do you not for a national championship? Let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Please hit subscribe. College football community with the Canes in focus. And hey, stick around. There's I'm going to have a link right here. Some episodes of some stuff you might want to watch. Check it out. Guys, it's a fun and crazy world. But I think they, we all know it's always all about the youth.